Hello and welcome back to Clownfish TV. It is me, Geeky Sparkles, and today it is just me because Neon is busy elsewhere. So today was the Disney's earnings report. It was for quarter one of the 2023-2024 year. Unlike other businesses that go from like January 1st to December 30th, Disney ends up going like from October 1st to um, September 30th. So this quarter would have been October 1st through the end of December. And now we're going to talk about what they said. We're looking at several different things they brought up. It's very clear they're trying to stave off the um, proxy war coming from Nelson Peltz and Blackwell Capital. Suddenly they're announcing all this stuff. They're trying to put a positive spin on what, you know, the, the old news. It's razzle dazzle time. Hey, guess what, guys? The board have, have agreed that not only have we brought dividends back, but come July, we're going to give you 50% more. Don't vote us out. It was very clear that they're very afraid of being removed from the position. So here's a look at some of the information they put out ahead of the call. Um, they said that they're, they went up 23% earnings share at $1.22, which is significantly above the expectation of 99 cents. Now, this is where it's interesting to me. So the streaming losses were about a third of the estimated amount they were planning on this quarter, and it came in at 138 million loss instead of the 400 million loss that was expected. Um, I'm a little confused because uh, they lost some subscribers and stuff. I think that there might be some, you know, juggling going on this this position because they were down 1.3 million subscribers this quarter. And they said that the re that the reason was is because they knew that they were raising the price. So I think some of the explanation for why they didn't lose as much money was because they raised the prices. But they said that people left and that's why they had a 1.3 million loss because of the price increase. But they were expecting a lot more than that. I also know that during this time frame is when they turned around and they said that they were, you know, oh, look, here you got this like $1.99 a month deal for Disney Plus and all these different special deals that new and existing or previous and new subscribers can get this deal. Um, if you come back and take this you know, $1.99 for three months, they also start doing this thing where you get significant discounts on a Disney vacation if you had Disney Plus. And that was all around the same point in time. So my question is, if they're down 1.3 million and they said that was because of the price increase, how much would they have been down if they had not offered all those deals and these people that they, they kept got it at a, a big time reduction in price? So I have to ask, ask that question, which of course they're not gonna answer. Good on you, you only dropped 1.3 million, but how many would you have dropped if you had not um, offered this, you know, blow up bargain to try to get as many people to, to, to come back or to sign on for a you know bargain basement price of $1.99 a month. And they don't mention that. And that's far cry from their normal price of like what, $10 a month for the, the ad supported tier. So it's a loss of money because if they're paying $2 and it wouldn't normally have been 10, you're losing $8 per customer too, which would explain um, some of the losses, but they also probably gained a bunch of customers at $2 per, per month per subscriber. And that probably offset it. But it's just interesting to me because I'm kind of like, how much did you actually lose before you, you pulled that one out of your ass? Anyway, either way, that's where they're at. So coming into the next uh, quarter, they're claiming they're going to add an additional 5.5 to 6 million subscribers. Here's the thing. And I think he mentioned this in the, in, the, in the shareholder meeting. There was so much information. I'm trying to remember everything, but it got brought up. My first thought when I heard this was how many of these are from Charter? Because when you remember the, the Charter Spectrum situation and Disney and I was like, oh, Disney lost, Disney lost. I was like, Disney didn't lose. Because what Disney's going to do is they're going to use that. They made a deal that all of their customers are going to get the Disney Plus, um, you know, ad supported tier included in their package. And they're getting paid like a, a much reduced rate for that. So while they're not making as much money per customer probably on that, they're going to they're going to count the subscribers and they're going to you're going to tout that, and then they're going to turn around and use those numbers to gain more money on the ad supported end. So when they sell advertising packages, they're going to say, "Hey, we have you know this many more million subscribers, so they'll get a better." ad rate, they'll get more money on the back end. And that's exactly what they did. They're going to go up subscribers because the charter spectrum is going to roll into it, which is what I said was going to happen. And that's exactly where these numbers are coming from. And they're pulling this all other ass right ahead of April's investor, you know, meeting and, and vote. They also mentioned, okay, they were supposed to hit, they hit 
23.5 billion, which is slightly below the expected 23.8 billion in uh, revenue. All right. And I think that the parks helped that one. But what's interesting to me was they also said they're on track to exceed the 7.5 billion in savings they promised by the end of this year. Thing is, they promised the savings by the end of last fiscal year. And now they're saying, oh, we're going to see it by the end of 2024. But you said in February 2023, it was going to be by the end of that fiscal year. And no one mentioned mentioned that. But I thought it was odd. So those are like some of the numbers that we're going into. And then we're going to talk about some of the different things that they talked about. Um, of course, some of the big announcements. Oh, Moana 2. Guys, Moana 2. There's been no, no sign of this movie at all. Um, we got to do something so investors don't kick us to the curb. So, hey, guess what? Um, we know the box office has been a problem. Iger basically admitted, hey, we're going to lean into uh, franchises and sequels and things like that because, you know, like Toy Story and, and you know, Inside Out and things we know are going to make money. Oh, one of our top streamers was Moana. So all of a sudden we're going to have Moana 2 out in November because they were working on it as a Disney Plus TV show. Now, all of a sudden, it's coming out as a theatrical release. So I'm not sure how good it's going to be as far as the animation or if they just cobbled together their TV show into a movie, how good it's going to be. I mean, hopefully it's good because I really like Moana. My mom also very much likes Moana. Um, I hope it's good, but I'm also kind of concerned because you just pulled this one out of your ass to try to save your position. And it's basically was a TV show. And a lot of times they don't put as much effort into the animations on their TV shows as they do a theatrical release. And after what happened with Wish, I don't know if it's a good idea to have a bomb with a theatrical release. So they're going to put it out in November, I think the 27th. Yeah, it's going to open in theaters. They said after receiving an unexpected call from her wayfinding ancestors, Moana must journey to the far seas of Oceana into dangerous, long lost waters for an adventure unlike anything she's ever faced. So yeah, basically they just took a TV show they were working on and they're going to put it into a, a, a feature length movie that they're going to throw into theaters. Look, look, we got, we got, we got more stuff coming to the theater guys. Things that people are going to want to see. Like he was talking about, they asked him about the movies this last year and he's like, Oh, you know, it didn't do so good. Uh, but we still had really good things like uh, guardians of the galaxy volume two and avatar that actually came out the year before and just kind of led into 2023. But we had those. And, and hot damn, we've got, we've got Inside Out 2 coming and, and Deadpool 3 and, and, you know, Planet of the Apes. And I'm serious. This is what he was trying to do. He's like, oh, we feel good about those. We feel good. And now we got Moana coming, Moana 2 coming too. We feel good about those. And they're going to do another Toy Story movie and Frozen 3000 and then so on and so on. Because they're going to just give us more of that shit because they know it's going to make money. As long as they don't find a way to ruin it because it's Disney. Which is funny, I'm going to bring up this too. Bob Iger strikes back and Nelson Peltz, an activist investor, says they don't understand the essence of Disney. We know a lot more about how to do this than any outsider is going to tell us. Yeah, Iger, because you've done such a great job understanding the essence of Disney. That's why the company's in the position it is, just in time for this 100th anniversary. Good job. I would also argue that Bob Iger doesn't understand the essence of Pixar, of Marvel, of Star Wars, of a lot of the stuff that they bought and the, the Fox acquisition they tried to repurpose and failed miserably at. I would argue you don't understand the essence of any of that either, Bob. But do go on how no one understands the essence of Disney as people are trying to bring Disney back to what it was because you done fucking killed it. But no, no, no. Everybody else doesn't get Disney, but thank God you do. I don't think people are buying it anymore, Bob. I really, truly don't. It's about proving the streaming business. I'm arguing that you don't get the essence of Disney across the entire, the entire thing. Okay, for example, Disney and Epic Games, okay? And what, I, I mean, from a business standpoint, it's not a bad idea. It's actually a pretty good idea. And if you look at the art piece, look, over here is the Disney Cruise Line world. And over here is the world of Disney, which is their shopping district. And then here's Monsters. Oh, here's Flo's Cafe from Disneyland and Stark Tower. And then on this side, we got like Pixar, Marvel, and all this other crap. And this is going to be the Disney worlds that are alongside Fortnite as part of a, another place you can go. So Disney and Epic Games are going to do this, you know, open game entertainment universe, okay, with Disney and Fortnite, which I do, again, I think it's a good business idea. But what gets me is, as a parent, I'm a little concerned about, is he keeps going on about how 
they were looking at the numbers and because Epic Games has like 1.5, you know, uh, they, they're 1.5 billion is what they're spending to get into Epic Games. So that's their equity stake. But they have like millions and millions of players. Okay. And when they're talking about the millions and millions of players, they, they're really focused on Gen Z, Gen Alpha. Gen Z are like my kids. Gen Alpha are even younger than my kids. And then a little bit of, and some millennials like that are the younger millennials. And there's been studies and they spend more time playing games than they do um, on television. So we need to get in there so we can monetize them is basically what he's saying. How do we get to these people so we can make them spend money, including the people that are, that, you know, are Gen Alpha is pretty young, including those people. Because, you know, they go on TikTok and they spend the, the monies. They got allowance. We aren't fleecing them. We need to fleece them more. So they said, um, I wish I was kidding. So they were talking over and over again about how they're going to do this. Yeah, here. In addition to being a world-class game experience and interoperating with Fortnite, the new persistent universe persistent universe will offer a multitude of opportunities for consumers to play, watch, shop, and engage with content, characters, and stories from Disney, Pixar, Marvel, Star Wars, Avatar, and more. So if they're selling ads, they're trying to make money. They're going to want people to shop to make money because they said it's going to be in-game purchases and like, you know, merchandise outside the game that you can buy. I mean, I'll give them credit for at least being upfront about it. But I'm wondering how long this is going to be that, oh, but there's ads. Here, guy, here's your ad experience for, for Disney that they sold ads. So you have to watch these ads to play. You can come into this world. I mean, they didn't say that, but I have to wonder because... I don't think they're going to spend five point billion just to hope people buy DLC content and shop online. That there's got to be more to it than this, or how they can leverage these people as you know Disney subscribers. But they were he was very focused on Gen Z, Gen Alpha, and younger millennials. And again, Gen Alpha is younger. I mean, we're talking. I don't. Even, they're they're just barely teenagers. You know, Gen Z ends this ends around kids that are like what 14 or 15 or somewhere in there 16 maybe and then you know of course it goes out further and then the younger millennials but it's a little concerning that they're just flat out telling people hey we're going to go after the the kids we're going to go after their their money so they can beg mommy and daddy uh for money but again i'll give them credit for at least being up front about it because we know the gaming industry does it all the time and they won't own up to it but Iger just he presented it like it was a win and owned it immediately. So I will give him credit for that. And it's not a bad idea. I just the parent, I'm a little concerned. Um, so he brought up that. Oh, it was also funny. Him trying to spin this stuff was just glorious. He kept making sure that he brought the Fox acquisition up. And because of our Fox acquisition, which, you know, we can do all this stuff. We have all this content that he's grossly shit on and ruined. But we have all this content from our Fox. It was such a great deal. Because everybody keeps saying, you ever spent on Fox? And he did. And it was a really dumbass decision, which it was. But he's still touting it as a win. Razzle dazzle. Don't don't vote us off, please. Don't vote us off. Um, he also got cornered about, um, about the uh, investment in parks. And about, they didn't say Epic Universe, but they said, you said we're going to be investing money in parks. Um, and someone said about the fifth gate. He wouldn't, he would dance around the question. He didn't answer it. He was kind of like, well, we got, we're going to do stuff at all our parks. And this, every park is getting something. And uh, cruise lines, Dimension Cruise, cruise, cruise ships. And, you know, I'm not saying much else about it. Look over there kind of thing. Um, WW News Today has broken down some of the, the investments. They're going to be spending $60, 60 billion in Disney experiences and theme parks over the next 10 years. But they're trying to increase capacity. But here's what we know is coming. And, and most of it's pretty damn lame, which I have been mentioning over and over again. Hot damn, the Country Bear Musical Jamboree is going to get a, a, an IP re-theme. Tiana's Bayou Adventure, which is a reskin of Splash Mountain, is coming. Uh, Ariel, the Little Mermaid, a musical adventure, is going to replace the Voyage of the Little Mermaid in the fall, which is the show that's in that one little hall. So they're just doing another show and probably updating the theater a bit. Again, a big nothing. Um, Blue Sky, Beyond Big Thunder Mountain, which we never heard anything else about. Oh, and the new Pirates of the Caribbean Lounge, which is coming to the Magic Kingdom with Peg Leg, Pete, and Barker Bird. Hot damn, I just, that's just going to bring them in. Um, Epcot, Test Track is getting reskinned with the, to the, like, a, with a theming towards the world of motion, which personally, I 
I love that because I'm an old school world of motion girl. I love that ride. I also love test track, but I miss world of motion. So it's, they're trying to like go into that nostalgia again, which I, I don't, I'm not mad at it. I, I like it. But again, it's another, just like, we're just going to take an existing attraction and put some new fresh paint on it and say, Hey, look, we did something. Um, a new Zootopia show is planned to replace It's tough to be a bug. It's tough to be a bug is a little theater with a little show in it. So they're just going to put a Zootopia there again, reskinning something they already have to put a different IP on it. And the tree of life, they mentioned that they, um, the, tr the tree of life is a, you know, they're going to have a new projection show and then the tropical America's land where they're going to give a, a reskin again to dinosaur to put it Indiana Jones, which is what they have out in Disneyland. So they're just reskin, 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 retheme is what we're hearing. They're going to add some things to America's land. Um, but they look like they might be like, it's, you can't really tell yet, but it looks it doesn't look like super impressive. But at least they're kind of having a couple new things supposedly coming there. But for the most part, everything they're mentioning is just replacements or re -the themes or reskins. Not a big deal. Then they're talking about um, they're going to expand the Haunted Mansion at Disneyland, which is true. Um, but they're not going to bring the ride back to 2025. Uh, they, they do think the Haunted Mansion holiday will be open, but they're, they're trying to just big expanded area, which is true. But again, you're just expanding upon something that already exists. You're not bringing anything new. Um, then they're talking about the Avengers multiverse attraction. They did mention that they are putting a new attraction in Disneyland for that. Um, so they're getting something new at Disneyland there. Where Disney World's getting mostly re, re themes. Um, then the Disney Treasure is going to launch this winter. That's one of their ships. And then they got um, the Look at, Lookout K at Lighthouse Point um, this summer. And that's one of, they've got a new island they're renting. Um, that's why they keep pushing the cruise lines. Disney Adventures expected 2025, 2026. But this is this, guys. And they're trying to get through their the Disneyland. They're trying to do a new expansion area. So it sounds to me like they're going to spend a lot of their, their money at Disneyland. We keep hearing stuff for like Tokyo is like that too and Shanghai and that. But Disney World is basically just getting green themed shit. Meanwhile, Epic Universe is coming and Epic Universe is going to kick Disney's ass. So they're I think they're trying to invest in other parks to try to like win over there. And I don't think that's a smart thing. Because Disney World is so much bigger than these other parks, um, and they, they can hold a lot more guests, a lot more people visit, I think that they need to be spending some more attention than just reskinning the stuff they already have. But hey, what do I know? So it was pretty interesting. I mean, I know they're, they're going to crack down on password sharing. They mentioned that. Now, they are going to do it in such a way that, that you'd be given the option to subscribe on your own if they thought you were... If they thought you were sharing pa using a shared password, and if you don't, then they're going to kick you off. And they were trying to talk about some Hulu stuff with Hulu too, which made me a little concerned because they were, they are, people are asking them questions about live TV and some of their answers, as much as they're charging, it's like $90 now for Hulu with live TV. It's ridiculously expensive. And then they kind of were like, well, you know, hey, it's not like we're going to focus more on Hulu itself. And I was like, wait a minute, if you were paying you $90, those aren't the people you piss off. But that's just, you know, what I would think as a business person. But then again, you know, um, nobody, nobody understands the essence of Disney and streaming and what to do better than Bob Iger. So I, I do, do I dare question it? You know what I'm saying? Nothing was mentioned about Elon Musk about, you know, I was surprised they didn't have any questions, probably weren't taking questions about, you know, the, the proxy war and what they were going to do, but it was very obvious this was this, the whole point of this thing was to try to be like, look over there and look over here and dazzle, dazzle, dazzle. And don't, don't, don't think about them. We're giving you 50% more when we give you a dividend that we're finally giving you after years and years and years. The next time we're going to give you more because the new board, our board, the vote for us voted to give you 50% more, which is a big nothing burger, but okay. Yeah, it's a win guys, right? And and we're going to do all this stuff with streaming. And, and you like Moana, right? We're bringing back Moana for Moana too. We're just repurposing something we were going to make as a tv show oh and we got percy jackson season two that we're going to bring to you and we just we just you know greenlit that so we can shit this announcement out and it was it was a lot of that and i had to laugh because he was like oh oh you know oh well, the box office well you know it didn't do great but we still had these wins and and, and we're gonna we're gonna double triple down on things we feel good about like franchises and we're gonna get more star wars with the acolyte and i'm like i thought you wanted to do well and they're going, a new Star Wars movie's coming with Mandalorian, Baby Grogu. Never mentioned the Ray movie. 
And he's like, and everybody likes that. They like the Mandalorian, so they'll like that. And Frozen 3 and Toy Story, another Toy Story movie, because Toy Story always is always a winner. And I'm, I wish I was kidding, but that's exactly what he was, he was like doing this. And I was just sitting here like, dude, you're sweating so hard because you're just really overselling and trying. And I mean, look, if they could make the company go back to being good, great. But I'm not gonna lie, I don't have faith in Iger. I haven't had faith in Iger for a long time because I don't think Iger understands the essence of Disney. I don't think Iger understands the essence of a lot of the things he's acquired. He wants to be the Borg and, and, and go out and buy all this stuff and spend all this money buying IP that they promptly ruin because they don't understand it. Even the Muppets is hit and miss. Pixar, they, you know, they did great for a while. After I got rid of Lasseter and it's you'll run through the things he was gonna do, it's kind of fallen off a cliff. Um, they keep doubling down. We talked about the, um, there's that di diversity inclusion chart going around and you can clearly see where Disney definitely followed that in the last few years and the results. But and if you, that's not saying you can't have something that's good, that's diverse and inclusive, but that when you're doing it because, when you're doing it because you wanna, you know, cause you have to, it's mandated and you wanna, you know, push the agenda. It doesn't come across as well as we're doing this because we think this is a good show and it just happens to be diverse and we just want to focus on characters and fun. And there's been a distinct difference as with Disney with these things. And they don't clearly understand Marvel. They don't understand Star Wars. They just keep doubling down on stupidity. And But don't worry, guys. They, they got this. Keep them voted in because you're going to get a 50% increase on your dividend share in July after only getting one in January when you haven't had one for years, but it's all good here. Anyway, please like and subscribe and we'll talk to you later. Bye.